Hello and welcome back to my garage here in Car Mechanic Simulator 2018. So I have, as you can see here, uh, the subject for today's, um, I don't know what word I, to, I was going to use. I was going to say symposium, but that sounds really pompous. Anyway, this is a new mod. This one landed in the workshop a few weeks ago and this is the first time I have found one. It is the Bugatti EB110 SS Lit Edition, and the value of the car right now is three hundred and four thousand dollars, which is pretty darn good. I, I paid roughly that in the junkyard for it, which hopefully means this will be a nice, valuable car to assemble once we get it uh, all done. And this is the first time I've done this car, so. I'm not sure what parts it actually has on it. Looks like there's a headlight and a door window. And I don't see anything else. Body condition 1%, so that's everything there. So now we can get this stuff. And is there a radiator? It's got a Pagani V12. The radiator is up there. Okay, cool. So let's see if we can repair any of this stuff. Looks like most of it. There was one headlight, uh, what tail light rather? I guess not a lot. The windows, right tail light. So definitely the windows. And that was front left door B, so presumably right door B. And the tail light. I think I don't think I had both of them anyway. So yeah, right tail light B, front window, left door, trunk B. Okay, let's see what we oh, and I also need the ABS. And that battery should be done by now. Oh, it has two radiators. Okay. Radiator fan housing. That's good to know. Okay, and that should be all the simple stuff. So let's see what we get for body. Pretty sure I don't have a front bumper or a hood. Don't have the mirrors. I know I have the trunk and the window. No, I guess I didn't buy the window. And tail lights. So what do I have in my inventory still? Oh, the right door. Let's take a look here at the parts list. I think everything, yeah, they're all B. Hood B, bumper B. Steering wheel 8. I don't even have a steering wheel in there.
Alright, cool. That takes us pretty much down to just body pieces at this point. And everything was a bumper, everything was a B part. So like this, we have the left headlight, so we need the right headlight, and the mirrors, I got the tail lights, trunk window, that should be everything. Alright, that should do it. Yep, 100% body condition. Perfect. Now we can go and get this thing cleaned up. I do love using a welder to fix a carbon fiber body. <laughs> That just amuses me to no end. So this thing is probably worth a ton of money already. I mean, it was $305,000 when we started. With the body pieces all put in, it's probably worth close to a million already. Oh, it's got the Matchbox, Matchbox car underneath here. Let's get out this thing and the, it's got the side fuel tanks. There must be a pump on there. There is. Don't think I can actually repair any of that except for the fuel pump. We're not going to use it. So, get rid of this and that. Small intercooler is shot and we're not going to use this pump. It's weird. <laughs> it's weird you can see the, the pattern of the interior from here. It's kind of disorienting. Yeah, see, look at that. We've gone from three point five three three hundred five thousand dollars to one point two million. And all we've done is pretty much cosmetically fixed it up. I don't even know what painting will do to will do to it. Some of the carbon fiber cars, when you paint them, it'll it'll do like the trim or something. I don't see any evidence of painting it having changed anything at all. Maybe that works if you use the other parts. Maybe there's a non-carbon fiber version. Maybe there's a non-carbon fiber version of this car that I haven't seen yet. I think we'll go ahead and use these wheels.
looks like this is going to be a nice, easy front end to do. There's no uh, cross member to worry about, so that means we won't have to get as many bushings as we normally do. It has sport tires on it, I just noticed. We're definitely not going to be using sport tires. Might even have to use slick tires, because once the engine is built, it's going to be an absolute monster. Look at that engine. There's, there's. It looks like it's going to be one with that. It's just the, uh, the engine block and the crankshaft and nothing else. There's no oil pan. I can see that from here. And no heads. There is a crankshaft. Yep. See, crankshaft and engine block, and that's all. Go ahead and yank that out, and put this back up so I can assemble the undercarriage, and then we'll put this on here just to get this thing into the proper mode, and we'll take the uh, engine block off, and we will do a mass repair after I flush out the things. Let's see, so that's 12, 16 bushings. Ah, damn it. Okay, so the tie rods are not repairable, so they go. The sway bars are not repairable, so they go. The gearbox stuff we're going to get rid of because we're going to replace it with new st with uh, performance parts. Was it that one? I'm not sure. I think it was this one. Watch me be wrong. I just spent a thousand dollars on the wrong frickin' transmission. For brakes, we're going to get the discs and the pads. As we might be able to repair the calipers and the cylinders. And the wheel hub bearings are all going to have to be replaced. Looks like we'll get most of those hubs back, though. For suspension, we need to replace both of those. So we'll get 
all of these together so we can start assembling our shock absorbers. I think we might be able to repair those rims. They were 21% each. No, no, no. This one is 23. I think we might have a. I think we might get a a bunch of those. I think we might actually get all those rims back. Not sure what the last one is. 27%. Yeah. I think we might actually be able to save all those rims. Okay, so we can get rid of these now, and then I want to look at the tires, because we're not going to use sport tires, obviously. 245, 40, 18. Yeah, 245, 40, 18. And then 325, 30, 18. Okay, so I matched, matched all the tire sizes. That's what we want. Okay, I was punching through that as fast as I could. I only saw two things fail to. Uh, I only saw two things break, so we're in good shape there. Uh, I got the right gearbox and I repaired the old one, which means we can see this is this is why I repair them. Uh, sell it for a thousand fifty bucks as opposed to like thirty or forty bucks for scrap value. That's why I always repair those things. And we got both the block. And we got both the block and the crankshaft back. So I'll just throw those in there and I'll throw this in here too. I, I'll, actually, I'll, I'll go ahead and throw all these on here since I have these parts. That'll get them out of my inventory. And then we'll have to go on a buying spree. Oh, I guess I didn't buy that. We'll have to go on a buying spree for the other be other parts that we need. Oh wait, there's actually a V12 pump. Okay, we'll just We'll pause, we'll pause this and we'll pause at that point here because I want to get the rest of it put back together. I also want to uh, I also want to paint the rims. So there are three calipers, not calipers, three cylinders. Front drive axle A. Two upper suspension arms, rear axle knuckle cover,
Okay, front wheel hub, rear axle, knuckle housing D. I think we're actually looking at that. All right. That should be complete. We should now have a full set of parts for the uh, undercarriage on the car. What I want to do is just paint these glossy black. Um, yeah, I think that'll look pretty good on here with the black carbon fiber. Yep. Okay. I think I got them all. I'm <laughs> just this car is gonna this car is gonna be like a Doctor Evil henchman car. all the tires mounted. Uh, I'm going to get this off because that leaves the rear tires to be done and I can come over here and get to work while those finish. Oh look at that. I just, re I just saw that. There's two more radiators here and I can't access them from the, from this position. That's just lovely. So radiator A. And those are undoubtedly going to have... <laughs> they're probably going to have the other fan housing too, you watch. So this is, this, I just noticed this too, this is an all-wheel drive car, because it's got front drive axles, which are not hooked up to anything. Okay, so the front end is completely reassembled now. I'm gonna try and see if I can. Well, maybe it'll be easier than I'm thinking. <laughs> I knew it! I freaking knew it! Look at that. The rear radiators used the regular fan housing, and the front ones use fan housing B. So I bought a bunch of extra radiator fan housings for the wrong one. Oh, I knew that would happen. I freaking knew it would happen.
Okay, and once once this stuff is in, this is going to be as far as we can go until the engine is completed, because it's a rear engine car, and we have to install the rear drive axles for, uh, once the transmission is in before we put the wheels back on it. Yeah, there's our drive axles. Uh, there's the gearbox. Bunch of radiator fan housings that I bought that I didn't need. I hate that so much. <laughs> okay, so now we need to buckle down and build the engine. So we're going to need well, a whole bunch of caps. For the V12, you need five crankshaft caps. And of course, 12 rod caps. And we will need piston rings. And then we'll come over here and buy our pistons and our spark plugs. Okay, then for V12 stuff, we're going to need, uh, let's see, this is a dual overhead cam, so we need one of these, and one of these, and four of these. I'm pretty sure, I, let's see, we need two of those, two of those, we need this, 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 don't need those, don't need that. Dit, 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 I think I am missing something. Need four of these cam gears. And if we look at the V12, we're going to need, let's see, we're going to need like 20 of these. I don't remember exactly how many. Probably, it's. I think it's actually 24. I never can remember. Um, and we're going to need, let's see, this is the Zonda engine, so it's going to be this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, I think. <laughs> gonna need these belts, gonna need, I already got one of them. Gonna need this thermostat, this timing chain, this timing cover, this shoe, need two of these, one of those. Um, let's see. One of these, one of these, one of those. I have a feeling that I am missing. I'd say I'm pretty sure it needs two water pump pulleys and a crankshaft pulley and a roller. It only needs like one roller B. Let's uh, go at it here. I know I'm. I know that there's more, but I am. I know there's more, but I'm just going to go at it. I'm just going to go to it here. Because there's a lot of things we need to bolt on now. This part gets a little tedious, I know. Um, do so many of these things. 
but it, it is, I mean, that's the game. That's the way it is. And this is what you're in for. I do prefer working on the V8s. Not as much stuff to, to screw on. And plus, I think they're just more elegant than the than the, the V12 is. The V12 is like, it's just the V8, but more, you know? I got the wrong heads, didn't I? V12B. I bet I got the wrong camshafts, too. You know what? This is not the engine I thought it was. This is not the this is not the Zonda engine. This is the Hoyera engine. Boy, I was really asleep at the wheel. I, I mean, I knew it was a V12, but this is—I was buying—I was buying parts for the for the Zonda engine, and this is the other V12, which means I'm going to need to buy a whole ton more spark plugs because it has like 12 per side. I also bought the wrong camshaft caps. That's probably, yeah, that's uh, definitely more than I needed. Looks like there's five per side, so I only needed ten of them. And I'm going to need the other head covers. Man, I thought I was so on the ball buying all those parts for the V12 and I was buying them for the other, for the wrong one. <laughs> Let's see, I need that timing gear because I didn't get that. And I got the wrong head covers.
before I forget, I know I need to buy these covers too for the intercoolers. Okay, that should do it. I think this engine is actually more compact than the other one. I have all this excess garbage that I bought. Oh my god. <laughs> Never can find the oil fill cap in this thing. I need to buy a starter as well. I thought about that before and I didn't do it. Looks like the axles are not actually connected to the transmission. Yep, look at that. Okay, and that showed 100% the car now. Yep, 100% across the board, that's what we want. So now we can move it over here and test out that engine. It's not a bad looking car. It looks, uh, it looks more like a Lamborghini than a Bugatti. Starting with 597 horsepower, Probably get 700 and something. A thousand and forty-eight. It's been a while since I built one of these engines. So I wasn't immediately familiar with it. It's going to be a beast to drive, though, I know. I want to sit in it and see what it looks like. That interior looks pretty cool. I really like this... Uh, it's probably... I imagine it's leather. You know, like stitched in this, in this pattern. I don't know anything about this car. I should have looked it up to see what, like, when it was made and all that stuff. The uh, interior controls look pretty old school. I mean, it has a gear shift. It doesn't have the flappy paddle gearbox, and the it doesn't have like a sat nav stuff. It doesn't have like a sat nav or digital digital gauges. So it's it's pretty much. Uh, an old, I imagine it's an older older school kind of car. Hmm, it's not bad looking. I'm not a big fan particularly of the carbon fiber, but it looks it looks pretty good. Um, 
Yeah, it's got like vents in there. What does that say? HGB Super Sport. Okay, let's take it for a drive. See if we can control the thing. I think, yeah, I think painting the wheels was a good idea. Uh, they would have been just flat black before. Though, I'm not sure if I really like these rims so much. They're, they're pretty flat. They don't have any depth to them. I like the ones that I like the ones that have some more visual interest. These are kind of like big black dinner plates. It's all right though. Let's uh, see what we can do with this car. Oh, it's got a lot of get up and go. So 211, and I bet it could have gone faster because it, I uh, let off the gas so that it wouldn't get so that it wouldn't start skidding around before I uh, gave it power again. 211 is pretty darn good. I think that's probably I don't think the I don't think that's the fastest car I've ever built, but it's up there. Okay, so remember it was $305,000 when we started working on it. And after the cosmetic rebuild, it was $1.2 million. So what are you worth now? $2.3 million plus $470,000 resto bonus. So 4.7? 4. 4. Uh, no, 2.7? 2.8? million. $2.8 million for that. So yes, that's definitely the kind of payday that I like to have. It's not a car I particularly want to. It's not a car I want to keep for my own collection, so I'm happy to go ahead and sell this one. And poof, out the door. And it wasn't even hard to control either. A lot of times when I build a car like that, it's hard to drive, and then I am actually kind of afraid to sell it to somebody because I imagine they're going to immediately go out the out the door and wrap the thing around a tree. But anyway, uh, that will wrap this one up. So if you made it this far, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope to see you again here for our next Junkyard Adventure. So on that note, bye for now.